As some will be aware, I have commenced walking the Fen Edge Trail. Having completed the first three sections of the Ramsey to St. Ives part of the trail, I have now found myself in the position of the next section, Summershim to Erith, not yet published and somewhat still in the planning stages. Noting this amazing project is being put together by volunteers, there was only one thing I could do, and that was to assist with the next section of the walk. So apologies, as the commencement of this video has revisited many of the places already visited in Summersham on previous videos, but what I have learned is the deeper you look into something, the more is uncovered, so I had to revisit some. The links between geology, sociology, history and current daily life in the fence reveal themselves the more you look, the more you discover and the more fascinating it becomes. For example, the two properties that we're now walking towards. The first, a building that I think most of us living in the area have noticed at some stage or another, the timber clad old tithe barn with the big hooks on the front. The neighbouring property, nothing special, just a normal looking home until you dig a bit deeper. I've driven past these properties hundreds of times over the years, even more past them on the Sumption to Warboy section of the trail, but what I didn't know until today. The old tithe barn was built around the 1600s when the Bishop of Ely exchanged the manor of Stoke of Summersham for crown properties. In the past, the barn was thatched. The big hooks on the front of the property were for removing the reeds should it ever be in flames. An evaluation of the home virtually next door, 100 High Street, by the AFU, revealed a series of linear features containing medieval pottery, which corresponded to the property's boundaries marked on the 1927 OS map. Then there's the benchmark on impressions in the high street, actually opposite the Meridian line. Not surprisingly, I got a very strange look off a passerby while taking a picture of the wall, so I commented on what I was doing. Turned out the gentleman was a geography teacher, knew all about benchmarks, and had walked past this one countless of times and never even noticed. Having parked my car in the free car park opposite the church and completed a loop through the churchyard and onto the high street, I soon found myself heading back down Church Street past the car park as I headed out of Summersham. After the double gated bridge we have just seen, the trail is meant to branch left and head back towards Summersham in order to visit the nature reserve and lake. However, if you carry a little further along the track, which is actually the Pathfinder long distance walk, you can reach Clone. Being aware, the next section of the trail board is clone as you head towards home sand and gravel pits just before arriving in Erith, and that of an old abandoned church, St Helens, also being there in the village. I got my OS map out and soon discovered there was also a moated site. I had no option but to explore this little tiny Fedland village a little further and maybe offer it as an extended part of the trail or even part of the walk itself. The old abandoned church, dating from the 13th to 19th centuries, was damaged in 1896 when the tower collapsed onto the church. The new St Helens church was built in 1889 to 1900 using much of the stone from the earlier one. Most of the windows except the eastern window are medieval and from the earlier church.
time yet still to visit the moated area, but just on visiting the churches alone, I think I've already made my mind up. Clone has to be included in the walk.